everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today, we are making Yangzhou fried rice. A lot of you think it is just egg fried rice, which is correct because there are eggs involved, but it is not as simple as you think. Today, I'm going to show you how to make it authentic by following the industry standard recipe. You didn't hear me wrong. Yangzhou fried rice has a very strict standard, which is published by Yangzhou Quality and Technical Supervision Bureau. If the local restaurants don't follow the rules, they cannot name their fried rice after Yangzhou. So stick with me and you will be surprised how much work and effort goes into this dish. There is a lot of preparation that needs to be done ahead of time. Let me go through them one by one. First is the rice. I'm using day-old jasmine rice. You can also use the leftovers from the Chinese takeout restaurant. If you don't have any, you can cook some one day ahead. I do have a video that I showed you how I prepare my rice. I'll link that video right here. You should go check it out later because the fluffiness of the grain really determines the final result of this dish. Set the rice aside. Next, we will talk about the sea cucumber, which is the luxury part of this recipe. Depending on the size and the quality, the price can be between 400 to thousands of dollars per pound. Don't worry, there is affordable replacement, which I will talk about it later. It's not about the price. Most of you may not have the access to buy it because I got it shipped from China. Even if you do, you may not have the time and attention to prepare it. It is an extremely time-consuming process, which includes 48 hours of soaking, one to three hours of simmering, then another 48 hours of soaking. This is why only time-honored local restaurants would do this. Since it is so complicated, I separated that process into a different video. I'll link it right here. You can check it out if you are interested. Once the sea cucumber is properly rehydrated, it will be 10 to 15 times of the size. You can compare. We will dice it finely. We only need 40 grams for this recipe. That will be half of this guy. You can stick the rest into the freezer and save it for a different dish. Okay, let's talk about the replacement. Just to be clear, the purpose of the standard recipe is to restrict the restaurants. So all the Yangzhou fried rice has the same taste and consistency. But if you're cooking it at home, it's okay to switch around the ingredients. Fresh sea scallop is a great replacement because it is meaty and the texture is pretty close. Just be careful not to overcook it as it will turn rubbery. This is dried shiitake mushroom and dried sea scallop that I soaked two hours ahead. Could fresh ones work? The answer is yes, but they won't taste the same anymore because they developed lots of umami flavor during the dehydration process. These two are the most basic Chinese dried ingredients. You can buy them in almost any Asian grocery stores. I also have a demo video that I showed you how to dehydrate your own. I'll link that recipe right here. You can check it out later. Squeeze the mushroom to remove the water. You can combine the liquid and save for a different recipe. Dice the mushroom finely. A lot of recipes will tell you to shred the dried scallop with your hands. I think that is annoying, so I just put it in a small blender and it will come out nice and fluffy. This is Jinghua ham, a special cured meat from Jinghua, Zhejiang province. It was listed as a tribute from Song Dynasty to Qing Dynasty. If you don't have it, a thick slice of Italian prosciutto would do just as good. We only need 40 grams of it. I also got 40 grams of chicken breast here. 
Put them both into a bowl. Drizzle in some Chinese cooking wine. Transfer into a steamer and let it steam for twenty minutes. Twenty minutes later, take the bowl out. You will see some liquid in there. That is the purpose of this steaming process because we can use it to flavor the rice at the end. Dice the ham and the chicken finely. Forty grams of peeled and deveined shrimp. Roughly dice them as well. Let me explain why don't we keep the shrimp whole. Two reasons. First, the smaller the ingredients are, the more evenly they can be distributed into each bite. Second, the rice is the star of this recipe. Everything else there is just for auxiliary purpose. No matter how expensive they are, that's why we cut everything so small so they don't take your attention off the rice. Next is the vegetables. I used forty grams of diced bamboo shoot, forty grams of diced carrot, forty grams of peas. They're chosen for their color because Yangzhou fried rice supposed to have a colorful presentation. If you don't care about that, you can use whatever you like. They are pre-blanched. I just put them in boiling water for about forty seconds. Because wok cooking is super fast, there's not enough time to cook these hard vegetables through. Quickly crack two eggs. Whisk them until you don't see any obvious egg white. You may notice that the measurements for each of these ingredients are so small. That is because this is a standard recipe for restaurants. They usually process a large amount and use a little bit of each when they take the orders from customers. If you're cooking it at home, it's okay to skip or double a couple of these ingredients. Now we have everything ready. Let's cook. Heat your wok until smoking hot. Add a few tablespoons of oil. Swirl it around so it covers the bottom. Pour in the egg. Stir this with a pair of chopsticks as fast as you can. In about three minutes, the egg will be crumbled into these small little bits. That is exactly what we want. The egg pieces should be small and match the size of other ingredients. If not, you can dice it on the cutting board. Turn off the heat. Squeeze the egg with your spatula so you can get rid of the oil. This is important. We don't want the fried rice to come out oily. Set the egg aside. Check how much oil you have left. I got about a tablespoon, which is enough. If not, you can add a little more. Turn the heat back on high. Toss in the jinghua ham, shredded scallop, diced shiitake mushroom, sea cucumber, shrimp, and chicken. Although the ham and the chicken are already cooked, sautéing them for a couple of minutes will activate more flavors. Adding the cooked day-old rice. Keep stirring on high heat for a few minutes. Make sure you use a large wok because it really makes a big difference. Thoroughly stirring the ingredients in a super hot wok will create a complex, smoky aroma. We call it wok hei, also known as the breath of the wok. Without that, your fried rice is missing the soul. When you see some grains dancing and jumping at the bottom of the wok like that, you can add the blanched vegetables and the egg. Add the steaming liquid at this moment. That is going to help to mingle everything together. Keep stirring. Then add some salt to taste. I used one teaspoon plus a quarter teaspoon. Before serving, sprinkle some diced scallion. Give it a final toss. 
and your fried rice is done. Look at this. The rice is so fluffy. Each grain is separated individually. Thanks to the YouTuber Uncle Roger, now I got so many people commenting on my fried rice recipes and asking me where is the MSG. The truth is, we don't use MSG in authentic Yangzhou fried rice. Let me explain why. In this recipe, the sea cucumber, scallop, shrimp, shiitake mushroom, chicken, and egg have a high content of flavor amino acids such as glycine, alanine, and glutamic acid. If we season them with salt, they become the sodium salt of amino acids. Ham is a piece of protein that is cured by salt, so it already contains lots of amino acid salt. The full name of MSG is monosodium glutamate. It is an artificial and pure single type of amino acid salt. If you add it to a dish that is already well balanced with all kinds of natural flavor amino acid salt, it's not going to do anything. That's why we don't use MSG. I love this fried rice. From each bite, you can taste the character of the different ingredients, such as the greenness from the sea cucumber, the crunchiness from the bamboo shoot, the freshness from the shrimp, sweetness from the carrot and peas, while the rest of the umami ingredients are pleasantly pungent. Everything together is supporting the rice. This is going to be the best fried rice you will ever have. Don't forget to check the link for my carbon steel wok as it will help you to achieve that wok hay effect and make your fried rice authentic. I have been using it on my channel for years now. I am proud to recommend it to you. And I promise it will make a big difference to your Chinese recipes. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, you can print the recipe on my channel, soupeduprecipes.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.